Greetings, Inquisitors. Welcome to the Holocron. It's important for any player in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes to be able to participate in the newest raid that CG has in the game. The raids do change from time to time, but currently the Naboo raid has several months left to go. And it's important for new players to be able to participate. So this video is going to talk through the easiest team to build for a new player to get on the scoreboard in the Naboo raid and help your guild be able to achieve that goal. Some fans of the channel put together a guild called Legio Lex Talionis. It is a safe place for new players to hang out and learn how to be part of the game, how to play in a guild and complete guild objectives. We do have openings currently in Legio Lex Talionis. The link to my Discord is up above and down below. If you click on that, you can go to a channel. The Legio Lex Talionis Guild for Beginners. You can ask for an invite and become part of our guild if you need a safe place to go. All right, so as we get started, please remember to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my stuff in the future, and use the notification bell if you want to be notified when I'm doing my live streams like GACs. So the reason it's important to be in the latest raid is because there's different levels of raid token currency that you can achieve, and the newest raid is the only one that gives the Mark III raid tokens. When you're bringing characters to higher relic levels, you need to buy these materials out of the shop that can help you get higher relic levels on your character and those are purchased with mark three raid tokens so it's important that everybody in the guild be able to get these mark three raid tokens and that only comes from the newest raid now there's several tiers in the raid and the lowest tier allows you to get a 300,000 score the gear 12 tier tier one allows you to get a 450,000 maximum score so if we just take a look at that and say look if we have 50 person guild if 40 people out of those 50 contribute their 300K, that's 12 million, that's already the first box. If some of those people agree to do 450, or if all 50 people agree to do 300, that's 15 million, and that's already box two. And box two is a pretty good reward, and it's quite a bit of raid token three that we can get out of that raid that we couldn't have before. So this is why it's important to be able to get into the raid get the whole guild going on this objective and be able to get these mark three raid token purchases made the mechanics that we're going to work with we're going to use a jedi team galactic republic jedi and the faction bonus for the raid says well a jedi ally has both heal over time and potency up <clears throat> they have a 40 percent counter chance and they deal bonus true damage to all enemies when using an ability the enemies do have a area of effect that will hit all of your characters and that 40 percent means that two or more of your characters will get that counter chance on average when they do their area effect attack when you do your counter attacks that's an ability and you'll do true damage to all of the enemies and melt the robots uh, with this uh, combination of buffs so how do we achieve heal over time and potency up Luminar Lead says, whenever an ally gains a buff they do not have, they gain heal over time for two turns. Kit Fisto has an ability that gives the entire team potency up for three turns. When you get potency up, if you didn't have it before, that's a new buff. So that will trigger everybody to get a heal over time, and you'll have potency up and heal over time for at least two turns. Grandmaster Yoda is in the team. He has an ability where he can share his buffs with the rest of the team. And as long as he has any unique buff that's not currently on the team, he can do that and share that. And it will extend potency up as well as triggering another instance of that heal over time. Or if Grandmaster Yoda has the heal over time, then he'll share it with everybody. So between these two mechanics, we're going to try to keep the heal over time and potency up buffs on our characters at all times, trigger those counterattacks, and work our way through the enemy. At tier 0 and tier 1, the enemy leader bots don't dispel buffs. So at the higher tiers, you have to watch your timing. If you time it incorrectly, um, you end up in a situation where you, you can outrun um, the enemy leader. You put up your buffs, and the enemy leader dispels them all. At the lower levels, that's not the case. There's no dispels. So you, all you have to do is worry about the timing on your buffs, and you're fine. Grandmaster Yoda does get turn meter from his basic, so he'll outrun Kit Fisto and the other characters in the team. We just need to time it with the two basics. 
Grandmaster Yoda for his three turns of the potency up makes a basic attack, a basic attack, and then on the third turn, he'll share all of his buffs, refreshing the potency up and sharing it with the rest of the team again. So in that way, we can keep these buffs up pretty much consistently all the time on the team. When we're actually in the fight, you want to target the special droids. So the first wave will just be droids, but then as the waves continue from there, you'll either have a Droidica or two in the wave or a Stap or two in the wave. You want to target those first and get them out. Qui-Gon Jinn has a skill that can remove buffs and Luminara. Uh, there's another effect where Galactic Republic healers can remove buffs on enemies when they use a special ability. So save those abilities for the Droidicas when they do their damage immunity. You have to be able to remove that. So there's no need to use those abilities on Qui-Gon or the specials on Lumi unless you need to. Uh, the middle special on Lumi, just save it for removing buffs. The enemies will then take a lot of damage from your counterattacks that include these area of effect hits. So at low levels, the amount of offense that you have on your character is not as important as it is at higher levels. At high levels, you have to have sort of a combination of speed and offense and time your skills out around those enemy uh, uh, leaders. But uh, at these low levels, tier one, tier zero, it's pretty straightforward. So the team we're gonna use is a very easy team. It doesn't require any hard farms. We've got Mace Windu available out of the squad store. We've got Qui-Gon Jinn, who's available for currency out of the Cantina store. Luminara is available out of the Galactic War store. And then Kit Fisto you can buy out of the Cantina store or with guild uh, store currency for the raid token uh, one that you can get out of any raid. Grandmaster Yoda then comes from a journey that's very easy to do. Uh, whatever your total stars are in your Jedi, you can easily complete that. So if you've got five six-star Jedi, you'll have a five uh, six-star Grandmaster Yoda. It's not a problem. When you get five Jedi to seven stars, you'll have a seven-star Grandmaster Yoda. Easy stuff. So with that, let's get into the gameplay and let's take a look at how this actually plays out in practice. And I'll show you how this team works through it. So in the last raid, you can see that you only have to be five stars to participate in this 300,000 level. And uh, characters, anything over five stars can go in here. At the next level, uh, tier one, everything has to be at least gear 12. At tier two, that's where you see that the energized command allies recover health and protection and offense and dispel buffs. Here's those faction bonuses. If you go into details in the overview, you can go down here to the Galactic Republic and you can see all the different bonuses that they get. So here we have the team, Lumi, Qui-Gon, Grandmaster Yoda, Mace Windu, Kit Fisto. We're taking them in. Uh, this, uh, I got all gear 12 characters. I'm doing the tier zero, the 300,000 tier. They are gear 12 characters. We could do tier one. But I just wanted to get in there and test this out. The mods in these characters right now are absolutely atrocious. They're, they're the, some of the worst mods I have in the account on these characters. And it's just to prove the point that you don't have to have fantastic mods to be able to do this. I just wanted to see how it would work. So here we see that Grandmaster Yoda is faster than the rest of the, the droid team. So Grandmaster Yoda will go. And now the whole entire droid team goes before us. And then our first character that we want to go after the droids is Kit Fisto. So in this iteration of the team, we're just keeping it simple. We're gonna do his ability that gives potency up to all the characters. So you'll see that once he gets potency up, we get this flash of true damage coming across to all the droids for 49.90 damage. Same thing here, as these characters go, you'll keep seeing those flashes of true damage. And we'll start getting some counterattacks coming in here when they attack. And we make it through the first wave very easily. Uh, now we get on Droidica, he goes into the damage immunity. So we have to work our way around to a character here. Qui-Gon removes those de uh, buffs, and then we just continue to attack. And Yoda 
little, I guess I didn't share the buffs there. And then you go into the air. When you go into the air, there's something you got to look for. I'll show you in, in a, uh, later in the video here in a little bit. But uh, it doesn't matter too much at these lowest levels which skill you pick first, second, and third. There is some consideration you have to give to the buff that's on the leader. You can see right now that the leader in this particular lineup has um, an arrow next to, uh, so there's a, something that looks like a running person or something, and then there's three chevrons together. Those three chevrons together are a speed buff. And if you can use the middle skill out of the three in the aerial, um, aerial combat support, that'll remove that speed buff off of the leader. So it's something that helps a little and at higher tiers you have to pay attention to, but at lower tiers, it doesn't matter too much. So we didn't remove it here. And you see, we still just melted these droids. We'll target the droidicas first again. We get these counterattacks coming in and just absolutely shred the droids. Third combat, we lock the debuffs on them and target the staps first. Easy. Second wave, droidicas. And I think we end this whole combat with 75% enrage. So we really had a lot of enrage left to go. It felt really easy. Of course, these were gear 12 characters in the base level, so it uh, should have been easy, I guess. Now going into the tier one, trying to get a full 450,000 with the characters at gear 12. Um, with a couple prior runs, Qui-Gon Jinn um, died <laughs> every time. So my Qui-Gon Jinn, I, I just want to make him a little more durable. So here I'm going to look for a crit avoidance arrow. And just, there are mechanics. If you look through the mechanics for the Galactic Republic, it says if a Galactic Republic gets critically hit, they gain critical hit immunity for a certain amount of time. And uh, that did not serve to keep Qui-Gon alive. He kept getting hit or critically hit and taken out. So I'm going to take a crit avoidance arrow and because he's gear 12 I'm going to be able to advance that to six dots and get 35% crit avoidance and hopefully that's going to be enough to, to keep him alive. The second thing we I took a look at just ways to get more durability in the team and I don't want to put on a bunch of Zetas for characters that aren't going to be useful but Mace Windu is really good. He's had a rework. He's a good character in the game for a lot of teams. So if we invest in Mace, we're not going to be unhappy. And two of his skills, uh, the Zetas are going to give pretty good durability buffs. So while Mace has resilient defense, he has 10% offense per stack and 100% counter chance. So again, when they attack him now, he's going to always counter and if he's got those potency up and heal over time buffs, he's always going to trigger the counterattack and always going to uh, do that true damage. So we're going to take the pod as a Zeta and um, sense weakness. When an enemy has shadow point, everybody recovers 10% health and protection. And that gives us some more counterattacks, some more damage and the shatter point gives more recovery for the team. So here we finish out Mace. This party's over is also a really good Zeta, and I took some uh, long time here to consider putting it on, but in the end I decided to run with just those two Zetas. So with those changes made, I go into the next battle with high hopes, but here you can see within the first couple waves, Qui-Gon Jinn has protection disruption applied to him, Protection Disruption takes away his protection stat, and you can see that they're targeting him. Mace isn't getting the taunt ability to protect him, so he, uh, once again, is taken out by the enemy team. So even after the change, it wasn't quite enough. The next battle we come in, and we do, they start targeting Qui-Gon again. But in this case, Qui-Gon gets a turn, and we manage to keep him alive. 
And here we've got the potency up and heal over time buffs on all of our characters. Mace is counterattacking like we want him to. And we get through the first wave pretty cleanly. Going into the second wave, we get a bunch of counterattacks, and you can see we shred through the enemies pretty quickly. Droidica gets that damage immunity, and we get the refresh on the potency. And here we use Lumi's middle ability to remove, and then we use Qui-Gon's ability to remove the, the damage immunity, so we get the Droidica down. Here we almost kill the Stap in one hit. We use the first ability, and the droids just go away very quickly as soon as they start attacking us. And what keeps Qui-Gon alive is the fact that we're not letting these guys get very many attacks. So here they're attacking everybody. We're getting a bunch of counterattacks in, going through them real quick again, no problem. They're targeting Qui-Gon, he's down to yellow again. Grandmaster Yoda will do the basic. And we could, do, we could have done a Luminara heal here. All right, and here's where we point out that there's this speed buff. This, these three chevrons next to the leader droidica that tell us that they've got the speed buff on. That allows them to get a free turn on one of their droids every time we take a turn. So we're gonna go into the sky and we're gonna select that what when, when you start out and you have all three active, it's the middle one, um, the one that destroys the radar dish. And you can see it puts all the debuffs on the enemy, and that chevron buff is now gone. So even though that was a locked buff, we're able to take it off with that uh, aerial assistance. And with that buff off, no problem. We work our way through this wave very quickly too. As you can see, those counterattacks... As long as we have our potency up and our heal over times, we're going through them very quickly. There's uh, Kit Fisto refreshing the potency up. And we got the, the damage immunity on Droidica again. So once we get to Lumi, we take that off and then we share the buffs with Yoda, get back around to Qui-Gon. And as long as we've not used those skills that remove the buffs from the enemy, uh, as soon as we need them, we've got them ready to go. All right, last wave. Go up into the sky. Pick whichever ability we haven't used yet. In this case, we get locked buffs. This is the most powerful one for this particular team because it's going to lock in the uh, potency up buff on all the characters. So they will maintain that for the next couple turns, no matter what. So that's nice. You can actually do something different with Kit Fisto if you want to, or whatever. So here again, we go through. And now we're on the last wave of the adventure. They're at 82% in rage right now. So with really mediocre mods on these Gear 12 characters, and not much speed, we've managed to secure the 450 point victory. So that, uh, that tells you, hopefully gives you some kind of indication of, of how easy this really is. It's really not a problem. And these characters, Luminara is gonna be, when the raid's over, Luminar is going to be kind of a character that you invested in that's going to be uh, less likely to be really useful in a team. Maybe they'll give her a rework someday. Kit Fisto, similarly, not that exciting of a character. But Mace Windu, Qui-Gon, and Grandmaster Yoda are all three fantastic characters. We don't mind uh, investing in them. So literally the only, like, let's say, lost cost here is one Zeta that you have to put on Luminar's leadership. But remember, that's going to get you this material for months, and it's going to pay that Zeta back far more than what you ever uh, had to put in. The Lumi Leadership Zeta is a must-have. I felt like I needed those two Zetas on Mace Windu to get the durability with the team at 450 with the Gear 12 team. I did use that Crit Avoidance Arrow on Qui-Gon. Uh, the effect of getting crit and then having crit immunity for a turn didn't really help Qui-Gon stay alive. So 
Maybe that could be a defense or health or some other kind of protective. It can't be protection, remember, because they're going to take your protection away anyway. Um, but maybe defense or health would also be okay there. But, but just make Qui-Gon durable enough that he stays alive. We could swap Qui-Gon out for another Jedi, but I really want a Jedi in there that has that <clears throat> ability to remove buffs. Qui-Gon has that. He's also really good in Grand Arena. You put an Omicron on him, you can make a team around Qui-Gon. So there's a lot of reasons to want to build that character. So I felt like he was the right character for the team. And you could see that, you know, with Lumi, we there was a couple times where we removed the damage immunity from a Droidica. They got it back, and then Qui-Gon was able to remove it again with his ability. So uh, I like him for the team. If you want to use a different Jedi, you can. Uh, he, he is kind of the weakest link in the team, though. He, Grandmaster Yoda probably has the fewest hit points, but he does take more turns, and with the heal over times, I didn't have a problem keeping Grandmaster Yoda alive. Anyway, so in my opinion, one Zeta is all you must have, but if you want to put the Zetas onto Miss Windu, that can also be uh, something that will help the team succeed more easily. To get a decent score on Tier 0, I had horrible mods. I completed it with 300,000 with only 75% enrage by the end. And just realize you can do this with lower star characters. They could be five stars in lower gear. And the key is we really want 50 people to get a contribution to 300k at 15 million. That's the idea. Ideally, that would be great for any guild. But just realize that anything is better than zero. So as soon as you get these characters to five stars, and uh, it really starts kicking in around six stars in gear 10. Uh, below that, it's hard to keep the characters alive, so your score will be pretty low. But once you get to about six stars in gear 10, you can keep them alive in that tier zero. And even if you only get a score of like 85,000, that's still better than nothing. And then each time the guild does the Naboo raid, you can set a goal to try to get your characters in a little better and a little better and a little better shape and get up to that uh, the score mark. Now, in terms of working on the team, <clears throat> let's say you're doing the executor journey as your first journey in the game and you're working on the, the team for executor. When you get into the later parts of that journey, you're just working on relicking the last few characters and getting their relic levels up. Uh, it's real easy, real easy to afford a little bit of gear and a little bit of squad Cantina Galactic War Store currency to get these characters built. So on my Lux Talionis account, I built these characters to level 12. That's what I'm showing in this video uh, with no problem. I was on the Profundity journey. I did that. I built a CLS team. I'm working on Job of the Hut, And I was able to build these characters to gear 12 in the background without missing a beat on any of my main projects. So my advice to everyone get them to at least five stars so you can get in there try to get them to at least gear 10 so they can survive in that first lowest tier and then just use the mechanics get that luminar unduly zeta on her leadership and see what kind of score you can get so that's my encouragement i hope you all found this interesting please remember to hit that like button on the way out if you didn't hit it on the way in Subscribe to the channel to see more of my stuff in the future. Hit the notification bell so you know when I'm doing my live streams. And of course, join us over on the Discord. The link is up above, down below. As I said at the start, we do have some open spaces in our Lex Talionis Beginners Guild. So if you want to jump in there and be part of that team, join the Discord. Check it out in the Legio Lex Talionis channel. Hope to see you over there. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next Holocron.